evening. And welcome to the 2018 annual meeting of the Downtown Partnership of Baltimore. To our friends over in the corner, please come in and fill in. We've got a very full house. It's one of our best attended annual meetings in a very long time, so please keep on coming over. So my name is Kirby Fowler, president of the Downtown Partnership. I'm very pleased that you joined us here tonight. The annual meeting isn't just our biggest event of the year. It's part of an ongoing conversation about what we want downtown and our city to become. But this year's event is more than that. You just saw the time-lapse construction video for One Light. This 28-story tower is the first high-rise building constructed in Charles Center in more than two decades, which is why we wanted to hold our annual meeting on this very spot. I think you'll agree that Madison Marquette, the owner-developer of the site, along with AECOM, who designed the project, and the builder Donahoe Construction have created a signature property. We'll hear more about the project from Amer Hamor, the CEO of Madison Marquette, in just a few moments. And if that weren't enough, tonight we will officially celebrate the grand opening of M&T Bank's Mid-Atlantic headquarters. I think that deserves a round of applause. As you know, M&T's lease was set to expire and clearly the bank could have relocated anywhere in the region. It says volumes about downtown as a business location that they wanted to stay right here. We're going to hear from Augie Chiesera about M&T's decision making process before being joined by the mayor to deliver a proclamation. I want to personally thank Augie and his leadership for their dynamic vision for keeping 600 employees in the heart of downtown and for being the presenting sponsor for tonight's event. But first, I want to recognize all of tonight's sponsoring organizations. In addition to M&T, we're supported by Bala Consulting Engineers, One Light, Luminary, Transdev, the University of Maryland Baltimore, The Daily Record, Flowers and Fancies, Sagamore Spirit Rye, and all of these incredibly valuable partners on the slides. I'd also like to recognize our public officials who are here tonight. A U.S. Congressman, Congressman John Sarabans was here. On behalf of U.S. Congressman Elijah Cummings, we have Amy Stratton in the audience. Thank you, Amy, for coming. Uh, Mayor Catherine Pugh, I think you're out there somewhere. I can't see, but you're over there. Thank you, Mayor, for coming. We'll be hearing shortly from her in a moment. We have a representative from Jack Young's office, our city council president. We have Councilman Eric Costello, our councilman for downtown. We have Councilman John Bullock. Do I see you over there? Yeah, thank you for coming up front. There we go. Uh, and please a round of applause for Councilman Eric Costello and Councilman John Bullock. Did I miss any other Councilman as far as you can tell? You were good? All right, good. If I missed anyone else, I apologize. And I believe, is the State Comptroller here, Peter Francho? He's supposed to say a few words? Okay, we'll, we'll move him in later. So. I'd like to start my comments with, with the following. Back in 2011, we released a strategic plan for downtown Baltimore. In it, we identified several key properties whose fate was uncertain. Properties that, candidly, I would used to lose sleep over. This address was on that list. As many of you know, it stood as a parking lot for many years, but now it's a signature building on our skyline. As the mayor will attest, we spent years working with Madison Marquette to find the right use for the site. On the interim basis, we paid for window installations, we helped to maintain the parking lot, and we provided updates to Amir and his team on the progress of downtown. And then everything started to click just a few years ago. First 10 light just across the street was converted into apartment buildings, apartment building, with ground floor retail and an FX Under Armour gym. Second, a lot of dreams came true when M&T Bank committed to anchor this new tower, a secret that I had to keep for far too long. And third, Madison Marquette stepped up to the plate and put together a strong development team and exceptional plan. This, be this beautiful building is one, albeit a major one, of 67 development projects that have taken place in downtown's oldest core neighborhoods over the last 14 years. Our annual report highlights four of the signature properties to open over the past year, including, of course, One Light, 414 Light by Questar Properties, 225 North Calvert by Monument Realty, 
at 300 St. Paul, another residential conversion by PMC Property Group. I can't tell you how many times I tell people about all that's going on here, and they respond, that just doesn't seem right to me. That's why we put up this billboard here on the screen, right next to the JFX as you approach Fayette Street. I hope you've seen it. I want all the commuters driving into downtown or restaurant and theater patrons driving in at night to know what's happening. Just look at Redwood Street, for example. For the first time in decades, every building and lot has been activated on Redwood Street, from South Street to Charles Street. Hotels, theaters, apartments, restaurants, they've all joined the roster of office buildings. Calvert Street is just as strong. Light and Baltimore streets are making great strides, thanks in large part to this impressive new property. Downtown has had a hand, well, Downtown Partnership has had a hand in all of this revitalization. Through our policy work, hands-on advocacy, tax credit strategies, and national marketing to investors and tenants alike. I'd now like to take just a moment to describe a few more highlights from the past year. For us, every detail and every employee matters. On the street level, our teams remove literally hundreds of tons of garbage each year. And we're doing this by being more efficient, thanks to investments like our new trash truck, additional vacuum trucks, and smarter team deployments. We also made a major change to how we compensate our employees. You may have heard that in September, we raised our starting hourly wage to $15 an hour. It's the right thing to do, and a step in the right direction, honoring our employees for their hard and conscientious work. Over the past year, we also expanded our safety programs, supplementing our downtown Baltimore guides with additional officers from Wolf Security, Walk-in Security, and P-Change. We are firm believers in the need for the positive presence of these officers on foot patrol in the downtown core. In terms of the built environment, we followed up last year's reopening of McKeldon Plaza with the completion of a major restoration of Preston Gardens. This effort would not have happened without the invaluable support of the federal government, thank you Congressman Cummings, the state of Maryland, Baltimore City, and our good friends at Mercy Medical Center. We'll honor them later. Rest assured. The work stabilized and cleaned the massive historic wall that separates the upper and lower levels of St. Paul Street in front of Mercy Hospital. To make sure we don't have to restabilize the wall anytime soon, we, we eliminated a lane of parking and moved a travel lane away from the upper portion of the wall. This allowed us to create an extra level of the park with green lawn panels, places to sit, and a much nicer view for the new residents and offices on the west side of the street. In the other areas that we maintain, along Pratt Street, Wilkes Lane, Courthouse Plaza, Hopkins Plaza, and Center Plaza, we activated spaces with events, markets, concerts, and free fitness exercises. We planted and maintained thousands of flowers, bushes, and trees. And because lighting brings both beauty and safety to a neighborhood, we have continued our campaign to light up downtown, adding more lights to Center Plaza, funding a cool art installation at Maryland Art Place, and upgrading our fountain lights in Hopkins Plaza. This is just a quick overview of our many, many programs, and I hope you'll read more about our work in the annual report. None of these projects would be possible without a host of funders, operational partners, and good neighbors, many of whom are here to receive a Downtown Baltimore Award later in the program. But first is my time to introduce Augie Chiesera. Now, I do regret not putting up a wall over here, when we were planning this project, because no one can hear what's going on. But for Augie, at least, I want you all to quiet down, and we should hear from Augie, because I bet all of you know Augie, but in case you don't, he's president of M&T Bank's Baltimore and Chesapeake region. He's committed and impactful as a corporate leader, a critical partner to so many of us. He and the other leaders of M&T had the inspired vision to choose this location and dramatically reinforce the future of the office market in the core downtown. We are indebted to them. We wouldn't turn our annual meeting over to just anyone, but clearly, Augie and M&T Bank are worth the exception. Please welcome my good friend, Augie Chiesera. Hey, Kirby, thank you so much. And really, to all of you this evening, welcome to One Light Street, M&T Bank's new home and new headquarters. 
You know, I'll, I'll tell you, M&T, not only have we been a longtime supporter of Kirby of the Downtown Partnership and Dr. Perman, you know, but we're the latest and one of the largest companies to commit our physical headquarters to downtown Baltimore. You know, and on behalf of the 2,000 M&T Bank employees that call Maryland home, I'd like to really thank Comptroller Francho, Mayor Pugh, the team at the Baltimore Development Corporation, I don't know if Dan Taylor's here or Kim Clark. We would not be in this space as if it wasn't for you, your persistence, your leadership, and your vision. And on behalf of the 2,000 employees in this building, or in this region, thank you very much. You know, I'll tell you, in, in 2003, my family and I made a choice to call Baltimore home. You know, M&T chose Baltimore as well back in 2003 because of the strong, diverse economy and wonderful quality of life here. You know, Kirby had mentioned from M&T Bank, Baltimore is our Mid-Atlantic headquarters and it continues to be vital to our organization's success. It's why in 2003, we entered into a long-term arrangement with the Baltimore Ravens to put our name on M&T Bank Stadium. And it's why 15 years later, which will be tomorrow, we chose to put our name on this building on One Light Street. The first new office and residential tower to be built in the Central Business District since the 1990s. You know, and I'll tell you, the, the M&T Bank building at One Light Street is now home to more than 600 M&T employees occupying just under 160,000 square feet across six floors in a flagship branch on our ground floor, which is really a vision for retail banking that we see here in the future. And I'm particularly proud of the fact that nearly 60% of the work done to get us into this beautiful space was done by our customers, many of whom are Baltimore-bred and grown companies. And these are firms such as Gable, Shepherd Electric, Cushman Wakefield, Commercial Interiors, Madison Marquette, uh, Price Modern, David Edward, RTKL, the list goes on and on and on. I know some of you are in this room today, so a shout out to you for making such a beautiful space for our employees here at this building. But I also think, as many of you know, our commitment to Baltimore and this region goes far beyond our name on a building and our name on a stadium. We committed our future to Baltimore many years ago because we believe deeply that this is a great place to work, it's a great place to live, and it's an awesome place to conduct business. To that end, we donate more than $4 million per year to over 500 charitable organizations in Maryland, and our employees amplify that investment through their volunteer hours and their service on over 200 local boards. And in fact, the Baltimore Business Journal has ranked M&T the fifth most generous corporation in the region and the most generous bank in the region. And we do this because at M&T, thank you, because at M&T Bank, we believe so deeply that when Baltimore succeeds, we all succeed. So in a nutshell, our new space is really a celebration of Baltimore, as is tonight's event. I invite you to enjoy the rest of the evening, and who knows, maybe one of you might actually lease this floor and will soon be neighbors. Thank you very much. Now we want to do something special for m and uh, We have a few dignitaries to join us on the stage. We'd like the mayor to read a proclamation, and then also we're going to do a toast. So I'd like to invite uh, the mayor, Catherine Pugh, up to the stage. I, I believe I saw the comptroller. He's, he's here right now, Peter Francho on the stage as well. Dr. Jay Perman, our board chair and president of the University of Maryland, Baltimore. Two other impressive M&T Bank leaders, Kevin Pearson and Mike Murchie. Amer Hamor, CEO of Madison Marquette, as well as, as well as Peter Cole, Chief de Melbourne Officer. And please come up on the stage right now. We're going to do a quick proclamation and a toast. Ladies and gentlemen, Mayor Catherine Pugh. We're changing the order a little bit here. First, I'd like to introduce a friend of Downtown Partnership who sits on the Board of Public Works. He's helped us out a lot on capital projects at the state. Our state comptroller, Peter Francho.
Thank you, Kirby, and thank you, m and Bank, and thank each of you for the economic activity you represent in the state of Maryland. We just wrote the revenues of the state up by $1.3 billion for next year. That's on top of all the other estimates. It is a windfall coming to the state from the federal tax cut and from uh, the imposition on early last week of the Supreme Court's decision to allow me to apply the 6% Maryland sales tax to remote internet sellers. So, I guess my message to Kirby and um, all of the wonderful people that are supporting the Renaissance of Baltimore is don't be bashful. Uh, there are people already in Annapolis going down and asking for that $1.3 billion. So get in line, get down there, and put your bids in because otherwise uh, you'll be at the end of a long line. But that is not because the state is having economic growth. It's simply as a result of the tax cut and the remote inner sales decision by the Supreme Court. Um, yes, by the uh, Supreme Court, where they gave us the authority to do that. What I believe is the true key to Baltimore's renaissance and future, what I call a new deal for Baltimore, is a provision nestled in the federal tax cut called the Economic Opportunity Zone provision. I think that this will provide the state of Maryland with an opportunity to put Baltimore and the rest of our state in the number one position of advertising to out-of-state investors that we want their money to come in here and support the economic revitalization of this city and also our state. It's going to require some work by the state of Maryland. Number one, we have to take some of that $1.3 billion and turn it into refundable tax credits for out-of-state developers in order to give them some incentive for coming here to Maryland. Number two, we have to make sure that the state's capital gains tax is coupled to the federal capital gains tax, otherwise we'll fall behind other states. We'll learn in another week whether the IRS regulation is going to be the right one for allowing the state uh, to couple ourselves to the federal tax cut. But that one provision, if it lines up properly, and I believe uh, the governor is planning to couple the state economic development grants to that economic opportunity zone, I think Maryland could be, make itself the number one state in the country for going after the trillions of dollars of capital gains that are waiting to be invested under that new provision in the tax cut. So this is a time of celebration, time of opportunity, time of hard work. Delighted to be here with Kirby, delighted to be here with all of you. We aren't out of the woods yet, but we're headed towards a better tomorrow. Thank you all very much for your support. Thank you, Comptroller Francho. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Mayor Catherine Pugh. So, shh. I should have okay. done that. I should have done that. Uh, what I'm going to do is present my proclamation before our toast evaporates. And so I'm going to read it. And Augie and our chair, Kirby, Kevin, Mike, Mike. Kevin, Mike, everybody step up. This is our mayoral salute on behalf of the citizens of Baltimore. We're saluting m and Bank. And let me just say, shh. Let me just say, we're really excited about this building, but I'm presenting my citation, so Kirby, you can do the toast. Okay, great, excellent. All right, so with the mayor's proclamation, the m and Bank Mid-Atlantic headquarters is now officially open in one light. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me and everyone else on the stage in a toast to longevity and prosperity in the bank's new home. Congratulations. Yay! Woo! Thank you, Okay, I had a bit of a drink. Let's see what happens. Okay. 
Of course, none of this would be possible without Madison Marquette. What they have done with this building is transformational. It is bringing investment, jobs, residents, and positive street activity to the heart of our city. It will be an icon on our skyline for generations to come. We are grateful for a wonderful collaboration with several other members of the Madison Marquette team. Peter Cole, Adrian Donnelly, Tom Artis Martinson, Jean Marie Harner. But of course, it would not have happened without the important role played by the leader of Madison Marquette, Amer Hamar. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Amer Hamor and Peter Cole. Hello. I hope you like this building. Uh, we wanted to welcome you to One Light Street. Uh, welcome to the Renaissance in the heart of Baltimore, uh, in the heart of our downtown. We've been at this spot for 27 years. And for 27 years, I mean, I hear people talking about a parking lot. For 27 years, we've tried everything to make this happen. But finally, recently, we have seen how this area has become a hub of new activity partly due to all the work of the downtown partnership. We have seen uh, residents flowing into this area. We've seen six new and renovated hotels come here in just a three block radius around us. We've seen great restaurants like Shea Hugo. We've seen the Shakespeare Center with their new building. We at Madison Marquette have focused in all of our projects on urban renaissance on mixed-use projects that bring energy, activity, and excitement to our cities. So we are proud. We are proud to be in Baltimore. We are proud to deliver a great office building. We are proud to deliver a center for one of Baltimore's main corporate citizen, m and Bank. We are proud to deliver, and I hope that you'll have a chance to visit some of them, the best apartments and the best amenities in all of Baltimore. So we want to thank the downtown partnership, without whom none of this would have happened, because they have created, cleaned up, created the activity, encouraged, worked with all the landlords. I want to thank Kirby Fowler. I want to thank Mayor Catherine Pugh. And my thanks also to Colin Tarbert and to Bill Cole. We want to thank, of course, MNT, uh, Augie Shisera, Kevin Pearson, and all of our partners here. And finally, I want to thank the great Madison team, Peter Cole, G George Kelly, uh, Tom Martinson, and everybody else who has participated. We are very, very proud to participate and to co-lead Baltimore's re revival. Thank you. We now move from corporate leadership to civic leadership and our mayor, Catherine Pugh. She has a lot on her plate that affects the strength and vitality of downtown Baltimore. She's currently hiring for a new commissioner for the police department. She and her team are transitioning the Charm City Circulator to a new operator. And she has initiated fines for vehicles that block intersections when the lights change, something that makes my staff particularly happy. So thank you. She and her agency heads have been instrumental partners in so many of the initiatives we've discussed here tonight. And I'm fortunate to work with her closely on a number of matters, including the redevelopment of Lexington Market. Please give a warm welcome to Mayor Catherine Pugh. Kirby says it feels like we're in a nightclub here. Um, I just want to say thank you, Downtown Partnership, and let me also say to Dr. Perman, Augie, thank you so much. This is such a great building. And as has been said, we look forward to being completely leased. And we know that this is just another great jewel in Baltimore. And as one of the developers said to me, this is actually the location of the heartbeat of Baltimore. So give that a big round of applause. And so let me just say, it is time for us to update your terminology and drop Central Business District. Shh. Here's the new terminology. Charles Street has been the fastest growing residential neighborhood in the city. 
So we want you all to understand that theaters, restaurants, spas, and gyms are located right here. And here's what you also should know. Baltimore is one of the top 10 cities in this nation that millennials are choosing to live in. They get it. As quick as we build the building, they're ready to move in. And if you missed it, the New York Times said, we are one of the 50 cities that you ought not miss while visiting. And so while we know that Baltimore has many challenges, what we do know is what we do together that will continue to move our city forward. We're excited about the Lexington Market uh, development that is estimated to cost between 30 and $40 million. We expect to be breaking ground in late 2019 or early 2020. There are no issues too small or too complex. What we do know is that Baltimore can be a great city. What we also know is that if you were around and if you haven't heard, we will become the cybersecurity center of the world. 13, 13 companies already moving here from Silicon Valley. So again, we're excited about the partnerships, this development, and others. Baltimore is on the move, and it will continue to move forward. Shh, I know y'all really started liking that. It'll continue to move forward with all of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Mayor Pugh. I'm obviously not a good shusher. We have another major institutional leader here with us tonight, our board chair, Dr. Jay Perman, from the University of Maryland, Baltimore. Long and excellent community partner, UMB continues to revitalize its campus in ways that benefit the entire west portion of downtown. As chair of our board of directors, Dr. Perman is an invaluable steward, helping us take on new challenges and refining the way we operate. It is my pleasure to ask Dr. Perman to say a few words. Thank you, Kirby. Good evening, everyone. Greetings to Congressman Sarbanes, Comptroller Franchot, of course, our Mayor Pugh, and all the public officials who've joined us today. I, too, congratulate Augie Chiasera and the entire team at M&T Bank. M&T's commitment to this city goes way beyond its name on our football stadium. With outreach in neighborhoods across Baltimore, M&T shows its dedication to this city every single day. Thank you for all you do. And of course, to Madison Marquette, you achieved what others couldn't, transforming a long, underused parking lot into this beautiful building. In this one block of Light Street, we can see Baltimore's future. The historic 10 light across the way, nearly fully leased with residents. And now one light, a modern counterpoint that will draw people into downtown day and night. This property, along with all the downtown Baltimore award winners that we're going to honor in just a minute, illustrate the wave of office expansions, hotel expansions and openings, and corporate relocations that we're seeing throughout downtown. Now, as you all know, and as Kirby mentioned, I'm privileged to wear two hats in this city. As chair of the Downtown Partnership Board and as president of UMB. And I think this duality in my role is vitally important right now, perhaps emblematic of how organizations and firms, corporations, need to pull together for our city. On the screen behind me, you can see the UMB campus and its relationship to downtown. When I talk about our university's commitment to revitalizing the neighborhoods around our campus, 
I talk explicitly of the West Side community because this is our link, our bridge to the balance of downtown. But that bridge needs attention. We know there's a gap in activity and development in these blocks. That's why I'm privileged with the mayor to have reinvigorated our university CITY partnership focused on the west side. Thank you again, Madam Mayor. You've probably seen coverage of our planned redevelopment of the Drovers and Mechanics National Bank Building at Utah and Fayette. That project includes hotel, apartments, retail, and parking. We hope it can serve as an anchor for the Bromo Arts District and as another community asset while the nearby Lexington Market redevelopment comes together. The project has the potential not only to transform the immediate area, but to catalyze interest in the west side of downtown and jumpstart the process of knitting together our fast-growing downtown with its western border. But we know this vision depends on all of us coming together the university, the city, the downtown partnership, private developers, nonprofits. Downtown is proof of what we can do together. And I, for one, look forward to applying that same effort and attention to the west side. As someone who lives and works in downtown, it's an honor to serve as the partnerships and the Downtown Management Authority's board chair. To my fellow board members, I thank you. <laughs> board members, you care deeply about our city, and it shows in the work you do every day, in your effort, your advocacy, and your leadership. Now, with that in mind, it's my pleasure to conduct a little piece of business, a vote of the membership to elect our board of directors. The combined board list starts on page 17 of your annual report. Do I hear any objections? Okay, as no one has rushed the stage, I hereby acknowledge a vote by acclamation in favor of this year's boards of directors. Thank you.